Hello there, my name is Dries, and in this video I will show you my painting process and how 3D sculpting for almost 20 years has influenced how I do it. This channel has been a 3D art channel until now, but since ZBrush has been acquired by Maxon and switched to a subscription model that I won't be getting, and since Nomad has, hasn't seen a big update in a while, I'm going to be making a bit more varied art content. Back on topic, the piece I'm going to be making is a fan art of Loom Invader. She's the oldest crush I remember having was when I was about five. This was made in Procreate, but my process is the same in Photoshop, so you could apply this to any app you like, as long as you follow the basic idea that we'll talk about in just a bit. First, let's make a small detour into ZBrush to explain where I'm coming from and where I'm going. ZBrush is a digital sculpting app where you can sculpt a piece of digital clay. You can add and remove material to your model. So the way I sculpt is by building out the form and then blending it in. I lay down a few strokes to add or remove material, and then I blend out the transition. So now, this is how I work in a similar way in 2D. I only use one brush for painting, and the most basic brush only. I use a single brush for blending on one layer with no erasing and no undos. This may sound like for some like I'm flexing, but I'm not. Uh, this is all part of my process, so let me explain. I only use one brush for painting because it's consistent and gives me predictable results. Uh, this brush is for adding or removing material to the canvas, like in 3D. You need to control how much you add, so using a basic brush is perfect and you don't need to erase or undo since you can just paint away everything. Texture and randomness come from the smudge brush. I like to use a brush with some texture but with a lot of pressure control so you can go from light blending to a fuzzy blur if you want. And finally I only use one layer because you need to be on a single layer for the colors to blend or else the smudge brush won't have anything to work from. You can of course use layers, but you should merge down to a single layer as soon as you're happy to be able to work with those values. So the idea is that you lay down your values and then blend them. You can color pick the new values and jump back to your standard brush to paint your transition and then blend again. The standard brush is here to lay down your material and you blend and sculpt with the smudge tool. You can clean up an edge and make a hard transition with the smudge tool, or you can blur out an edge and pull out the values to give it a more smoke-like quality. I paint hair by blending the values along the hair direction, changing the smudge tool size to give the illusion smaller hair, and I drag the values from light to dark and then the opposite from dark to light. And that's pretty much it. Put something down with the standard brush and drag it around with the smudge tool. It's like sculpting but in 2D. Now I'm going to go off script and just talk about what I'm doing in the video. I'm going back to the beginning of the video. There are two things I'd like to talk about that happened during the intro. Um, first is that I use a sketch at the very beginning and I am not too attached to the sketch mainly because I'm a terrible drawer. I can paint but I'm very very bad at drawing and expressing something with a line so I use it as a guideline like the pirate code. So I'll do the sketch and I refine the sketch to, uh, so I have a clear idea of what I'm aiming. And then I'll start blocking out the picture, blocking out my, uh, my main mid values. And then I'll 
delete the uh, the sketch layer. But uh, throughout the video, sometimes you'll see a bit of um, a bit of a sketch happening, and that's because um, whenever I'm unsure of a shape or what I'm doing, I like to sketch out um, an idea on a new layer. So I'll sketch out the um, contour of the face whenever I feel like I'm missing something or I, I'm too far off and I can't clearly see the shape within the painting. So I'd like to sketch um, the outer silhouette or the strands of the hair. Uh, also, you'll see me at the beginning when I blocked out the um, the image, I used uh, a big uh, red shape. And that's because I like to have, since I'm painting everything on the same layer, I like to have... Um, I'm not going to paint everything perfectly and so there are bits of red that are going to come out throughout the painting and that just gives it a bit more uh, life, a bit more texture. And you can see that um, I'm picking colors a bit at random um, because I'm not very focused on colors. Uh, colors don't really, really matter. You, you just have to be in the ballpark of what you want. but the exact color doesn't really matter. What matters most is values. So I started blocking out gray shaped values. And um, I picked a random color that was roughly the color I wanted and then picked a gray, mid gray value so I could pull out shadows. So I can pull out light and push shadows. So you can go lighter or darker. So I would like to start with a average. And then once you have the colors on your canvas, uh, you just pick a value that is either lighter or darker, cooler or warmer. And that's what decides the, the actual color. So you, I pick when I want to, um, when I want to work on a, a specific region of the canvas, I'll pick a color that's there and then I'll go either lighter or darker and just cooler or warmer depending on what I want. And that's how I pick the colors. If you look at it, the colors are pretty random. Throughout the, the painting, you can see me jumping all around, all over the piece. And usually what happens is that I, I don't work I work everything up at the same time, but it's not intentional. It's just that I look at the picture and when something annoys me, I just work on that. Uh, for the horn, I didn't know exactly how to create the volume of the horn. So I picked a bicycle lamp off of Google and used that as a, a paint over to, to have the shape and the volume because I didn't know how with the lighting and everything, how it would work. And you can see at some point, I, the bottom, when you look at the bottom right, I made that smoky, wavy thing. It's just that I didn't know how to finish the picture. <laughs> so put some random colors that are from the piece and just blended there slightly with the background because I didn't know how to I didn't know how to finish it. I didn't want to make a full body. I didn't know what to do with the shoulder. I didn't want it to be, um, I wanted the focus to be on the face. So random colors, use the smudge to create some vapor-like image. You can see that we're in pretty much little, little refinements here. Um, work the image slowly, 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 and then just fix things I don't like. If I look at the picture and something bugs me, usually that's, well, put my focus on. Uh, you could see at some point the, the hair changed, the side of the hair changed completely. Um, 
I like the shape that was there, but it didn't really match at all the uh, the character. So I changed it around. Here, uh, you can see also at some point I I shrunk the canvas size, so now you have more uh, black bars. Added the uh, the black stripes to make it more like the character, and that's pretty much it. So uh, thank you. Uh, if you're still here and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.